This is Danny again. I'm looking at the Victron Smart Battery Protect now for um, insurance uh, insurance policy against my do-it-yourself design on a, a LIFO uh, 4 um, implementation on my boat. Of course, um, boats, there's drinking involved and um, batteries are expensive, so I think this low va this uh, this is going to be a, a pretty good uh, addition to my design and I'll just take you through the testing I'm doing on my bench um, before I put it on the boat. So the idea here is to have a low voltage um, disconnect of 12.7 volts and then I'm going to uh, reconnect again at 12.9 volts. Again, on lithium-ion batteries, the voltages are really specific, so I need to see how good I'm going to be measuring things. Um, here's the general um, schematic. I won't go into too much detail, but the main thing is I've got an alarm, an LED alarm on the um, Smart Battery Protect. I've got um, another um, thing I'm going to test, and that's basically going to be an input from the BMS uh, and hit the um, this one of these sensors here and so my BMS will actually be able to shut this down because remember BMSs operate on a cell by cell uh, basis so they'll give it'll be pretty important to be able to shut it off and then of course I'm going to be I've got loads over here and then the input over here and then of course I've got a much bigger system right here what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be testing the voltage accuracy we're going to be um, testing the disconnect and the recovery and then we're going to take a look at the alarm um, LED output and then um, we're going to test current draw and then we're going to uh, test the high voltage disconnect function which is not user selectable. This um, this low voltage disconnect is user selectable by a Bluetooth application. Then I'll show you a screenshot of that. First, I'm going to look at the voltage accuracy. So what I'm doing is I'm just measuring um, the voltage on this post right here against what the Bluetooth says. And it's almost exact. I'm going to give you a quick overview of what my lab setup is now. Uh, I'm using a constant voltage, constant current power supply uh, that I um, got from Marine How To. Basically, he wrote an article on it. And I'm using that, and I've been using it for my testing. So I'm supplying output right here to simulate a battery input here. And then um, I've got a, right here I've got a BMS uh, alarm that I'm, um, that I'm testing. Uh, so what, and I've also over here have a loads, um, a simulated loads panel that I'm using a breadboard. And I'm a big fan of doing things on a breadboard before you get, into the boat and crawling around. You can do a lot of testing here and debug a lot of things while sitting at your house instead of being on the boat. Uh, I've also got a LED, a 12 volt LED connected to the uh, connected to the LED um, alarm output right here. I'm running um, a load. Here's an example of a load I'm, ru I'm running. And I'm also monitoring um, voltage on the uh, loads, the load side of things. Finally, I've got a pretty big load I'm I'm running. Uh, it's a, a I think a 20 watt load. Now for the BMS test, what I'm going to do is simulate a BMS. Um, where we've got uh, BMS has problems and they need to disconnect uh, the, the uh, loads. So uh, what we have here is the battery side. It's the battery minus on the BMS. 
there's a power minus and a power and a charger minus. So when we have a problem with the, the system, of, for instance, a particular cell goes low, what happens is this, the, the uh, power or the charger goes, get floats, and the, uh, aside from the battery. So it disconnects the negative side. So I'm going to simulate that right now. Here's a, a brief um, shot of the, um, the way that the BMS is. So I'm going to simulate having th this section here float. So I'm going to t remove the ground from this section and we're going to see if, if the load, if this panel, this load panel disconnects. So here I have uh, a, the alarm is right here, so I'm going to now disconnect from the breadboard and my, load, my loads went off. So that passes the test. I can now integrate my uh, BMS into this battery protector. Now we're going to look at the low voltage disconnect and test it. So I have... Um, I have 12.7 uh, disconnect and then 12.9 um, reconnect. Now there's a, I believe, a 10 second delay on the, um, on the disconnect and then on the uh, alarm. Here's the alarm LED right here. And then um, I think it's like a 90 second delay after that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate um, this, but I'm not going to go through the delay because it'll take too much time. Um, so I'm going to basically take this down to um, uh, we're going to take this down to 12.7, right? So I'm taking this down. To, there's 12.65 on the um, on this input post, um, and you can kind of see I've just dialed down the. Um, I just took this knob and just dialed this down, so you can see now the load light is still on in the distance, but I've got now got an alarm light. Okay, so now you can see that I've got this error right here. Uh, my alarm light is off. Um, I'm below the the threshold of. Uh, of, of where we need to be to shut it off, right? So, um, and I've got, and my loads aren't on anymore. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go take, um, now the magic number for recover is 12.9. So let's uh, take this up to say 12.98 or something like that. Now you can see there's a delay again, so the things not things aren't going to recover right away, and so let's wait for them so to recover. You can see now that my my loads panels uh, back up, um, my sub panels uh, reading 12.8 now, and uh, the the battery protect status or is in a normal state, so we recovered. Next, we're going to test the high voltage disconnect. Uh, I've got my power supply set at 16.1, but uh, my voltmeter will indicate the correct voltage. So we're going up to 16.6. You can kind of see the air triggered, triggered, triggered there. And I'm going down, 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 but the air is still going. And um, you can kind of see on the load side, I can tell when it disconnects from you know the voltmeter there so it it looks like it works pretty well uh, around 16.1 or 2 it, um, it it hasn't fired yet but let's see 16.1 see when it fires okay uh, looks like it's firing around 16.3 good enough Okay, the book says 1.4 milliamps of draw. So I'm measuring how much draw this has. 
As you can see, it looks like it's generally about 1.5, but then there's uh, a little pulse of, of 2, 2.8 milliamps. That could be because I'm running the, um, I'm simulating uh, having a BMS input here. And uh, I'm running uh, at 13.5 on my power supply. So it's a pretty low overall current draw. Is it 1.4? I'd say no. It's probably average is closer to maybe about 1.8 after you average out what it's doing, but it's a pretty good and low current draw. So should you get the smart battery protect or the regular battery, battery protect? I think it's pretty obvious if you have lithium uh, batteries that you're gonna need the more accurate user selectable um, battery protect. The other ones, aren't user, user selectable. So you're going to have to live with a 12 volt uh, disconnect. And that is not tolerable in my estimation for lithium ion batteries. Uh, so I think that overall, this is a really good value. I'm pretty happy that I got this one and we'll install it on the boat. Well, till the next video.